Oh, hold up. I do not have the motherboard yet, so we're gonna have to wait on that video. But instead, I have a different video for you all today, and sorry it's been so long since I last posted. Not like you cared anyway. But let's get right into the video. So what do I have for you all today? Well, I have a pretty little build using AMD Ryzen, the new, the latest, the greatest CPUs from AMD that have actually been a little bit controversial. Uh, prior to launch, there's a lot of hype. Uh, AMD released some benchmarks. People were pumped up. They thought this was going to be the groundbreaking revolution that would make PC gaming great again. But when the gaming benchmarks came out, it turned out that the AMD AMD Ryzen CPUs did a lot better in productivity than they did in gaming, um, but that type of CPU really fits well for me. I game a lot, uh, but this CPU is just plenty for the games I play. I mostly play CSGO, but when it comes to productivity, this thing is a monster, which is really going to help me out with editing YouTube videos and other things. So. That's what build we'll be looking at in maybe a week. I'm planning on filming it this coming week, but like I said, I have a AMD Ryzen build for you all to tide you over until that day comes. This is a $1,200 AMD Ryzen build. So which CPU did I choose? I went with the AMD Ryzen 7 1700. It's a 3.0 GHz 8 core Ryzen CPU. It's 65 watts, so it's 30 watts less power consumption than the 1700X and the 1800X but it still gets very similar overclocks uh, all the overclocks I've seen all three chips get to around four gigahertz and it really doesn't matter which one you pick because they're all eight cores they're all 16 threads and once you overclock them the performance is very similar so in this case it makes most sense to go with the cheapest of the three which is the 1700 it's 329 dollars eight cores 16 threads great for productivity and it's all right for gaming. We just got to see what happens once uh, AMD releases some patches and games get more acclimated to Ryzen. I'm sure at the end of the day, games will adapt to the Ryzen architecture and will get a lot better results. But until that day, we got to wait. And to cool the CPU, this is the only CPU out of the three that comes with a stock cooler. It comes with an AMD Wraith LED cooler that actually gets you some pretty decent overclocks. So in this case, I'm not going to go with an aftermarket CPU cooler. For the motherboard, I want the ASUS Prime B350 Plus ATX AM4 motherboard. This thing is a full-sized ATX motherboard. It has four memory slots supporting up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked up to 26 66 megahertz and it does have crossfire and raid support and it has six sata 6 gigabit per second ports and of course usb 3.0 headers because it is 2017 after all it's a pretty cheap motherboard for the am4 plus socket it's only a hundred dollars and it has a lot of features that uh similarly priced motherboards don't have so it's a no-brainer in this case go with this motherboard for the memory, I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB kit of DDR4 clocked at 2666MHz. Uh, RAM prices have been increasing at a steady rate for the past few months, and unfortunately, it's led to 16 gigabytes of RAM costing $100, and this is a cheap kit of RAM. Uh, we're seeing RAM prices for 16 gigabytes going well over 100. It's terrible, but this is some of the best looking RAM you can buy in my opinion. Looks very clean, uh, just sleek. I love the design of the heat shield. Uh, definitely go for this RAM if you're looking for a 16 gigabyte kit. $100 is decently cheap for DDR4, unfortunately, and it looks good. Just go with this RAM right here. For the storage, I went with an HDD SSD combination. For the SSD, I went with a PNY 240 gigabyte SSD. It's $80, has pretty good read and write speeds and you can put your OS on there and just get snappier performance overall put a few essential programs on there 240 gigabytes is a good amount of solid state storage uh, for the main hard drive we're gonna go with the Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte 7200 rpm hard drive standard speed standard you know just standard overall it's a very standard hard drive and it's cheap only seventy dollars and Seagate makes some pretty darn good hard drives so good solution right here for storage for the GPU you probably saw this coming I went with the EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 8 gigabyte super clocked GPU it is the cheapest 1070 you can buy right now it's a three hundred eighty dollars and 
overall, it looks good, performs good, everything's good about it. Uh, it comes factory overclocked, like I said, it's the super clocked edition, so you get a few extra megahertz on the end of that number. And when it comes to price to performance, this is one of the top dogs right here. Expect to play games 1440p, ultra settings, no problemo. For the case, this is my favorite case in the whole wide world, it is the Corsair 200R ATX mid tower case. This is the case I'm actually using for the build that I'm planning on making soon with Ryzen. It's a great case, great airflow, good clean design, and plenty of space for cable management, and it can fit all kinds of GPUs and CPU coolers, plenty of room in here, love this case. Last off for the power supply, I just went with the cheapest 600 watt I could find, and it's the Thermaltake TR2 600 watt ATX power supply. Is it 80 plus certified? Is it 80 plus bronze certified? Silver? Platinum? Who knows? Uh, no. It's not 80 plus certified, but it's 600 watts, $44, and Thermaltake, to my knowledge, makes some pretty decent power supplies, so it was the obvious choice for this build. And we come in under budget at $1,157. Take the extra $43 and buy yourself, I don't know, something nice. You deserve it, bud. So that's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like rating. If you're new, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will personally respond to them because that's just the kind of guy I am. You all have a great night. Peace.